good. We're back to the guitar, Lewis Lee Guitar Show. This is lesson number 12. So what we're going to delve into right now is a finger exercise, and we're going to finish. We're going to move on to page 56. We're still working on page 56, exercise three, and we're going to go to the second two measures. We did the, okay, we did the first two measures, and now we're going to go to measures three and four. And so now we're going to go with the A string, the A note, which is here, and the fingering is the, directly under it. So the fingering is one, four, four, three, one, two, one, four. Now these exercises are to give you control. They're very important. Think of when you're uh, training for the Olympics or if you're just training to play um, soccer, or it, it could be tennis or whatever, you have to do exercises to get your muscles acclimated and formed so that you have the strength in whatever you're trying to do. And it's important, these exercises are challenging, but to get your fingers really strong and the dexterity there so that you coordinate your left and your right hand. So do not think exercises are not important because they are. Think of it as a sport now. This is a, something you're trying to conquer. So you want to make sure that your fingers are strong and they work independently and you can really get the best out of the notation, whatever you're trying to do, because you have the proper uh, technique. So with that in mind, remember here again, it's A, C, F, A, C, F, A, C. So we're going to do it much slower, but to, and remember you use down and up strokes, okay? So we're going to start the metronome. Here we go, ready? One, two, three, four. stop is we've, we've only done it three minutes remember the objective is to do it ten minutes but there's a lot of information I need to cover so I'm trying to be conscious of the time so I can get all this information in but make sure that you do it ten minutes also uh, we'll talk about in the next page a practice log sheet you want to make sure that you log in 
when you're practicing and how long you're practicing. That's very important. I thought about this when I was playing. Something else, you'll notice that when I'm playing, I do not have to look at my, my fingers because I know it. It becomes instinctive. It's almost like driving home. Uh, I live in Culver City, so I might take the freeway, which is congested 405, but if not, I might go uh, Santa Monica, or I might, excuse me, I might go La Cienica straight up, or I might go to La Brea. But anyway, whatever street I take, I don't have to think about it. You know, I could be speaking on the phone and driving because it's automatic. When I come to the time to, to you know, to make a left turn or a right turn, I just do it automatically because it's become, uh, you, you, it becomes instinctive. And so that's why practicing is important so that you know where these notes are. You don't have to look at your fingers because when you're looking at the music, you cannot look down at your fingers. Okay, so that's why practicing is very important. So you're training yourself where these notes are. Also, each and every note is important. So you don't want to have it where a few notes sound good and a few notes, ah, they're fair. You want to make sure each and every note is the best. Then that makes you a better player. That's why when you see me playing, I'm articulating each and every note. Every note is important. Then you get used to it. You see, then you'll sound like Carlos Santana. He's one of my favorite guitarists. Every note he plays is just incredibly awesome. He can make his guitar sing. Or Jimi Hendrix is the same way. These are some of the outstanding legends that I grew up listening to. So this is very important. When you're practicing, make sure each and every note is the best. And that comes with your technique. That's why we're focusing on this. You'll notice that when I'm playing, I'm using the tips of my fingers. So if I go to ring a doorbell, I'm going to ring it with the tip so I can push harder. I'm not going to go flat. Or if I'm trying to push something, I'm going to use the tip of my fingers because that's your strongest point. So when you're playing a guitar, you want to make sure that you use the tips of your fingers. So each and every note I'm using the tips of my fingers because if you go flat, will not give you the best sound and you could make a mistake. So it's very important to make sure you use the tips of your fingers. I was thinking about this when I was um, practicing or when I was reading this exercise. That's that. Now, something else you want to make sure that you do is when you're strumming. Remember, and I'm just trying to reiterate this because it's very important to make sure you use down, up, down, up, down, up. It's just like running. If you're running, you're going to go left, right, left, right, especially if a pit bull is chasing you. You want to get out of the way. You're not going to go left, left. You're not going to skip because that pit bull will get you and he'll bite you. You want to go left, right. You want to run, kick up some speed. And the only way you can get that speed is left, right, left, right. Well, with the guitar, it's the same way. Down stroke, up stroke. Down, up, down, up, down, up, down, up, no matter what it is. Now, there are exceptions when you can play down strokes. And sometimes it might be written in the music. We'll cover that in the previous lessons. Or it might be up strokes. If you're playing... That sound, I want to do an upstroke because there's a certain sound that I'm looking for. But that's the rule. Remember, uh, there are exceptions to every rule. Just wanted to cover that. This concludes the lesson for the finger exercise for lesson 12. Thank you so much. Guitar Lessons with Lewis Lee is brought to you by the Eubanks Conservatory of Music and Arts a 501c3 nonprofit corporation whose mission is to help parents teach cultural arts to their children at no cost and to encourage positive growth development, helping to reduce negative aspects of society in the lives of our youth. Welcome back to the Lewis Lee Guitar Show, and this is episode 12, and we're going to work on the um, theory part. Theory is your reading. Reading is very, very important. It's literacy. When you can read music, you can do a lot. I know sometimes I go play at gigs, I'm reading the music, and they say, oh, you know the music. No, I don't know it. I'm reading it, okay? But I read it like I know it. And that's very important, you see, because you can really do a lot. And for guitar players, a lot of us, we play well, but we don't focus on reading. All we want to do is a play. You want to make sure you can read because that'll facilitate you. You can learn a lot of songs and do a whole lot. So reading is very important. Remember, it's literacy. Okay. Having said that, 
we're going to look at continuing page 17. We're working on the reading. The last lesson we did um, on lesson 11, we did uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5. Today we're going to do 5, 6, and 7. Okay, so we're going to delve into number 5 this time. Now, if you look at your book, remember, use your metronome, put your metronome, always get it started. And also, normally what I do is when I'm teaching, I let the metronome play. I know in my car sometimes I don't listen to the radio, I have the metronome playing. Or sometimes at night when I'm getting ready to lie down and go to sleep, I let the metronome play. I get used to it. You know, it, it becomes subliminal, where it gets into your subconscious. You want to listen to that beat. You know, all of these little um, tricks and trades will help you become acclimated to hearing that beat. That beat is important. And a lot of times I do gigs and people will say, my timing is impeccable. That's why I practice with this metronome. I listen to it. You can play a wrong note, but if you're on beat, it doesn't sound wrong. But if you're off beat, it stands out. So it's very important. And also, you may hear sometimes, I may play a wrong note. My producer told me last time I was playing something, he picked up where I played a wrong note. Well, I'm perfect. And all of you are going to play wrong notes. Don't become discouraged. Just keep up the good work because it's natural. Your instructor here, I play wrong notes, so it's natural. We all make mistakes. I just want to make that clear. A mistake is good. If you don't make a mistake, that means you're too perfect and you're not alive because nobody's perfect but God. And he doesn't live on this planet, okay? So we all make mistakes. just want to put that in here. Okay, so having said that, let's look at lesson five. So in lesson five, we have a whole note. Then we have a bunch of eighth notes. So that's really the more the the uh, note value goes down, the faster the pace, meaning eighth notes will be two, three, four, one, and two, and three, and four, and now it's sped up some. The tempo has not sped up, but it's more active. If it were uh, uh, 16th notes, there we go, one e and a two e and a three e and a four e and a one e and a two e and a three e. It's more active, so you want to be aware of that. So now we're using the eighth note. So we're going to look at lesson number five, study five, and we're going to delve into that right now. So let's give a pre-count, then we'll get started, okay? Here we go. Waiting for the one. One, two, three, four. Two, three, four. Okay, now that's study number five. Now we're going to do study number six. Here again we have, we've introduced a quarter rest. You'll see in the second measure and the third measure. Remember, rest means no sound. So when you play that F, you have to make sure it only rings for a half of a count. And that's in measure number two. Remember, a staff consists of five lines and four spaces. Measures are are defined by bars. A bar divides a staff into measures. Okay, you have a bar, and that's that line that you have going uh, straight up and down. Okay, that's the perpendicular line. Okay, and the horizontal lines are for the staff. So you count in between those bars, we call those measures. Okay, we do not call them bars, but sometimes it's interchangeable. Somebody may go, say, go to the fifth bar. So that's the fifth measure. But normally we say the fifth measure. But it's interchangeable. Well, it doesn't matter which one you use, as long as you're at the right place. So we're going to try study number six, and we're going to delve into that right now. And I'm going to give us a pre-count. Here we go. Ready? One, two, three, four. Two, 
Now, on this one, I stopped because this one we have two measures, two staffs. On number six, we have two staffs, and then we have a repeat. So I just wanted to make sure that you understand that. I just stopped so that you, those repeats are very important. So we're going to do number six one more time, and then uh, pay attention to the repeat. But we will not do the repeat. So here we go. Ready? One, two, three, four. Great. Now, uh, we're about to run out of time. I have to be conscious of the clock. Number seven is a bit challenging. So if you can do number seven, work on that because it's complex. It's not uh, difficult, but the rhythm that I put in there is a little bit tricky. So uh, we'll cover that again. Um, but, you know, you want to look at number seven uh, just very quickly while well, we're about to run out of time. So, um, yeah, on number seven, just try to practice that because in the first measure, what you have is you have uh, an eighth note followed by a quarter note. So it's one, two, and three, four. It's one, and two, and three, four. One, and two, and three, four. So it's a little tricky because you're seeing the gap. And so on that fourth um, count, you have a quarter note and you have a quarter, uh, you have an eighth note and an eighth rest. So that four is on that G, but it's not held that long. And the rhythm is a little tricky. And just very quickly, let's look at the second measure uh, or the third measure. The third measure is really tricky because you'll have a bunch of notes. You have two eighth notes, actually three eighth notes and a quarter note. One, let me put my metronome on so you can hear this. Just want to cover this. We're about to run out of time, but. This is very important. Three, four, one, and two, and four. One, and two, and three, four. That's kind of tricky because, you know, you'll see that note comes in on the end of three, and it's held over to four, and then on the end of four, there's a rest. So we'll get into this, but try to make sure you study um, page 11, the note, uh, values and the equivalency with the rest because that'll really help you because it's really important if you're singing or you're playing and you're supposed to hold it for a certain amount of time that's what you want especially if you're with the group because if it lingers on your note is still out there and everybody else has stopped so just pay attention to the note values and how long you should hold it and remember have fun that concludes the part of lesson 12 the theory Thank you so much. Guitar Lessons with Lewis Lee is brought to you by the Eubanks Conservatory of Music and Arts, a 501c3 nonprofit corporation whose mission is to help parents teach cultural arts to their children at no cost and to encourage positive growth development, helping to reduce negative aspects of society in the lives of our youth. Welcome back to the Lewis Lee Guitar Show. This is the segment on fun, lesson instruction number 12. Okay, and so we're gonna finish with the song, Hotel California. And the reason why we're gonna focus on that is because you want to learn different rhythms, okay? And in the book, I have several different rhythms. I think it's on page uh, 52, different rhythms. So we're going to just talk about that because we're going to just do maybe, if you're looking at your music, let's take the first um, th four chords, the A chord. Here we go. One, two, three, four.
Now, in music, it's all about making a statement, and it's about different patterns, especially if you want to get called back for a job. Uh, what I learned when I was in college uh, from uh, Joe Pass is that you can be a great soloist, but are you a great rhythm player where people love to have you play in rhythm to accompany them when they're soloing? And you don't want to be selfish where all you want to do is solo. You want to be able to be a good rhythm player too because then you'll get called a lot. And you want to get called for, you know, if you're playing rhythm or lead or whatever the job may entail or whatever it might be. So you want to know different rhythms. And the word that we use is different patterns, a, a sequence. So you can play, and I have a bunch of them. I'll just do a simple one where I'll play a to. I'll play a whole, I'll play a half note with two uh, eighth notes and a quarter note. A half note, two, three. So that's a, a whole note, a half note with um, two eighth notes and a quarter note. Two, three, four. I did it just the opposite. I played a uh, half note with the quarter note and two eighth notes. Okay, so I got a little confused. Remember, made a mistake, acknowledge it. So that's one rhythm. Then when you go to the next pattern, the next chord, I don't want to play that same rhythm. So I'm connecting these two different rhythms to become a pattern. What I'll do is play maybe uh, all eighth notes. One, two, three, four. So I'll put those two rhythms together and it will sound like this. Remember, whole note, a half note with a quarter note and two eighth notes, and then four eighth notes. Two, three, four. Now, the reason is there's a pattern and there's some variety. And that's when people will know that you're seasoned. I'm not just playing straight. This sounds okay too. That's okay too, you see. But what I've learned when I'm playing, I keep a pattern and I can get people's attention because they hear that pattern and it's not you know where I'm just strumming anything so I keep the pattern ready one two three four Here again, these chords, it's difficult to make on this guitar because the strings are super light. And you heard me, I just made a little glitch here on playing that chord because I'm used to playing uh, on my jazz guitar. And these strings here, and this is not an excuse, it's a fact. This is a eight and this is a 42. This right here is a 14, and this is a 42. So by the time it gets up here, that's a 58. So these strings are really super thick. And just to let you know very quickly so you can see it, remember this is all instruction. The strings on this guitar are thick.
no problem because they're not thin. If they're real thin and my fingers are strong, sometimes I have to be conscious of that. But like I said, these strings are really thick. That's because it's a jazz guitar. Now, those chords that I just played on this other guitar wouldn't have come out like that because I'm playing a lot of chords and I can play really fast chords on this one. But this one I have to be careful because it's not made for that. The strings are very light. And they're like uh, spaghetti strings. You know, I have to... It's light and if I play a lot of chords, uh, I have to be careful of it. So anyway, I got off on a tangent and my producer friend just reminded me that we're about to run out of time. Thank you so much. I got caught up into the moment and this concludes the lesson for fun. If you would like to purchase a copy of the Eubanks Guitar Pedagogy Course Instruction Book used by Lewis Lee in this video, just contact us at lewis-lee at the-ecma.com or mail a request to Post Office Box 1175, Hawthorne, California, 90251, or call 424-350-7027. And remember, all donations are fully tax deductible. Thank you for watching the Lewis Lee Guitar Program. And if you need any more additional information, you can always go to our website, which is the-ecma. Dot com. Once again, the T H E hyphen E C M A Edward Charles Mary Adam dot com. Thank you so much.